At the start of the movie, we see a bunch of inmates at a maximum level penitentiary trying to make their way out through a tunnel that they have dug. The plan unfortunately fails, so they revert to something more dangerous. The inmates gather in the open field, face the giant wall next to them, and run at it at full speed. The plan is to strike the wall at once and break it into pieces. Following this, the movie flashes back to a few months earlier. We are introduced to the protagonist, a notorious and fearless gangster named Chi Sung, who works for a wealthy billionaire named Kim. He is infamous for beating up, threatening, and even killing people if required. One day, Chi Sung is ordered to take out a scientist named Choi, so he heads there along with his gang. The old man begs for his life and even offers the gang a lot of cash, but every single one of them refuses. When Chi Sung gets bored, he lunges towards Choi with a knife, and the screen fades to black. In the next scene, we get to know that the gangsters were surprisingly apprehended by the cops. As for the old man, he has survived the assassination attempt with only minor injuries. A prosecutor corners Chi Sung and forces him to reveal the name of the organization he works for. He even promises to reduce his sentence to just two years in exchange for the invaluable information. However, Chi Sung refuses to open his mouth. He would rather die than rat his boss out. At last, the case goes to a hearing, and Chi Sung is sentenced to eight years in a maximum level prison. While his boss Kim is proud of his loyalty, he is also nervous that someday Chi Sung might open his mouth. Later, when Chi Sung is being escorted to his cell, he hears someone whistling and immediately recognizes it. In the blink of an eye, he fights off the guards, breaks free from them, and rushes to the place where the sound is coming from. Chi Sung is shocked and delighted when he sees that his best friend and old associate Soon Tan is still alive. Sometimes I think Soon Tan is still alive too, but then I just burn. It turns out the latter had been sentenced to a death penalty a few years ago for murdering someone. Later, the two catch up in the playground and reminisce about their childhood. Soon Tan also inquires about his family, and when he learns that his parents have passed away, he becomes dejected. Nonetheless, he is hopeful that someday he will get out of this desolate place. During the lunch break, Chi Sung meets several other prisoners who have heard stories of his bravery and loyalty. They promise to help him with anything he wants in the prison, but the group's conversation is cut short. When the local bully gang arrives there and warns the new to keep quiet. Chi Sung stares at the leader for a while, but he doesn't react at the moment. Elsewhere, Kim goes to meet Choi at the hospital and proposes that they do business together. The latter is unaware that he was almost assassinated by the same person sitting next to him, so he agrees to the deal. He has one catch, though. Since he was humiliated by Chi Sung earlier, he wants him dead. So, Choi asks Kim to kill the notorious gangster by the end of the week. Hearing this, Kim is caught in a serious dilemma. On one hand, Chi Sung is his trusted accomplice, and on the other hand, he wants to seal the deal at any cost. After a bit of deliberation, he eventually goes with the second option and agrees to assassinate his own right-hand man. Later, he visits Chi Sung in the prison and falsely assures him that he is doing everything he can to secure his release. Our protagonist quickly buys into the deceit and becomes happy that his boss cares for him. He then reveals that Soon Tan is alive and well in the prison. For certain reasons, this doesn't make Kim happy, indicating that the two had some sort of beef in the past. In the meantime, we are introduced to another one of Chi Sung's close friends and fellow gang members, Ju Jung. He visits Chi Sung's home and informs his parents about the recent developments. Surprisingly, the old couple are not surprised at all, since their son was always a notorious criminal. As the three continue chatting, we are shown an old picture on the wall, which reveals that Ju Jung, Chi Sung, and Soon Tan have been best friends since childhood. They grew up together and became gang members together. Back in the prison, once all the guards are away. Chi Sung's cellmates reveal a secret tunnel they've been digging for months. They are actually planning a prison break. Chi Sung is both impressed and tempted by their plan, but he knows that a small mistake can lead to dire consequences. In another cell, the group of bullies violently attacks an innocent inmate named Moon Su. The following morning at breakfast, Chi Sung sees Moon Su's bruised and tear streaked face and feels a pang of sympathy. Unable to withstand the injustice anymore, he surprisingly retaliates against the bullies by delivering a severe beating on them. All the other inmates can only watch in awe as a single man takes down an entire gang. Though Chi Sung's actions earn him a lot of respect, they also land him in solitary confinement. Elsewhere, the scientist Choi takes Kim to his factory and reveals that he's extracting a deadly serum from a rare Japanese plant. This serum can kill people in an instant without any pain or discomfort. Choi offers to sell the serum to Kim, but with one crucial condition, Chi Sung has to be killed first. That
That night, a group of men violently invade Chi Sung's parents' home, brutally beat them, and run away. In the morning, one of Kim's henchmen approaches the bullied inmate Moon Su and offers him money to kill Chi Sung. However, Moon Su feels a sense of indebtedness towards Chi Sung and is torn between his loyalty and the temptation of quick cash. Elsewhere, Kim's rival gangster, Bong Sheik, pays him a visit. That's a it's a sick name. It is revealed that he has become handicapped after Chi Sung stabbed him in the leg seven times. So now, he's seeking revenge. As the first act of retaliation, he sent his men over to Chi Sung's house and brutally attacked his parents last night. Ju Jung, who is also there, hears about this and immediately rushes to the old couple. Fortunately, they are still breathing, so Ju Jung takes them to the hospital for medical attention. The following day, Chi Sung's girlfriend visits him in the prison and reveals that his parents have been attacked. The devastating news engulfs Chi Sung in a whirlwind of emotions. But little did he know that more trouble is about to come his way. That evening, as he is slowly walking towards his cell, Moon Su suddenly appears from behind and stabs him. However, instead of fighting back, Chi Sung remains calm and tells him to run away. It appears as if he is slowly going to pass away, but in the nick of time, some guards find him and rush him to the hospital. In the meantime, Ju Jung learns about the attack and also gets to know that his boss was behind it. Enraged, he tries confronting Kim, but his friends stop him, saying it's a bad idea. Following this, Ju Jung makes his way to the hospital to visit Chi Sung, who has regained consciousness and is recovering well. As they catch up, Chi Sung is informed about his boss's heinous plan to have him killed. Although he is disappointed by the revelation, he is not entirely surprised, as he has always known that Kim would betray anyone for his own benefit. Later, Ju Jung returns to work and tells his boss that Chi Sung is still unconscious, hoping to buy more time and keep his friends safe from further harm. In the next scene, Chi Sung makes a triumphant return to the prison, and his fellow inmates celebrate his survival. But rather than resign himself to a life behind bars, he begins to plan a daring escape with his cellmates. They communicate with their associates on the outside in code language and carefully plot their escape. One night, they execute their plan and crawl through the vents, making their way towards the sewer system. But as they reach a fork in the tunnel, they are faced with a difficult decision. One path leads to an army base, while the other leads to an airway base. Unsure which path to take, they decide to return to their cell and regroup. The following morning, the group starts digging an underground tunnel, hoping to find the correct path to the airway base. They work tirelessly for weeks, putting in all their efforts and sweat. But one day, the prison warden announces that everyone is being shifted to the second floor. After their tunnel plan falls through, Chi Sung and his group come up with a new plan to escape the prison by destroying the old surrounding wall. They attempt to push it down every day during their break time, but only end up hurting themselves. The guards watch this from their towers, but only make fun of them knowing that their efforts are futile. However, one day, unbeknownst to all of them, the wall finally starts cracking. Meanwhile, Ju Jung and his fellow gang members are in the countryside, playing with their new weapons. When Ju Jung fires a shot in the air, it accidentally hits a plane flying overhead, causing it to spiral out of control. Out of all the places, it crashes right outside of the prison. As the wall breaks from the impact, Chi Sung and his friends make a run for it, and many other inmates follow suit, resulting in chaos inside the prison. Over half of the prisoners manage to escape, including Chi Sung and his four friends. In no time, the news of the prison break becomes national headlines, and Kim's gang also learns of it, making him nervous. Meanwhile, Chi Sung and his group hide inside a photo studio and take the owner hostage so as to evade the police. They also manage to steal clothes from a nearby dry cleaner and change into them to avoid being recognized. As they watch the news, they learn that one of their gang members, who is caught by the police, has revealed their gang's name as love and friendship. Hell yeah. Translated to English, that's the worst gang name of all time. Despite their dire situation, the group is taken aback by this name and can't help but to laugh at it. Oh, okay, it's bad regardless. While in hiding, the hostage woman is forced to cook for them, and surprisingly, she does it willingly and with care, as if they were her house guests. Soon, Chi Sung's girlfriend arrives with phones and money for everyone. She is happy to finally be with her man, but due to safety reasons, he abruptly breaks up with her and tells her to stay away. With the police still searching for them, the group discusses their options and what they should do next. They know they cannot hide forever and must come up with a plan to either escape the country or clear their names. However, Chi Sung firstly wants to take revenge against the people who attacked his parents. The group is skeptical about the idea, but they eventually decide to join him. As the first phase of their plan, they sneak inside Bong Sheik's hideout and brutally beat all of his men up. Then, Chi Sung corners Bong Sheik in his car and stabs his other legs several times, making sure he can never walk 
again. Meanwhile, due to the news of the prison break, Choi finds out that Shi Sung is still alive and becomes enraged. He confronts Kim about the lie and decides to back out of the deal, but this only enrages the cunning billionaire. He attacks Choi brutally, calling him a good for nothing scientist. In the next scene, we see that Shi Sung is hell bent on taking down his former boss Kim, but when he reaches the hideout, he is stopped by his best friend Ju Jung, who is still loyal to the billionaire. Both of them ask each other to step away, but when neither of them budge, a fight ensues. Shi Sung obviously emerges victorious, and once he is done with his friend, he and his group take down the other gangsters. Amidst all this, Shi Sung notices Kim trying to escape, so he follows them in a car. But once again, Ju Jung stops him, this time with a gun in his hand. Shi Sung warns his best friend to get out of the way, but when the latter doesn't move, he has no choice but to drive at him at full speed. In the last second, Ju Jung shockingly puts his gun away revealing that he never intended on pulling the trigger. But by this time, it's too late. As Chi Sung fails to stop the car in time, he crashes into his best friend and seriously injures him. Riddled with guilt and sorrow, he immediately loads Ju Jung into the car and drives him to the hospital. Meanwhile, all his friends are arrested by the cops one after the other. Chi Sung himself is chased by several police cars through the busy streets of Busan. He has the chance to escape via a dark tunnel, but he decides to stay on the road and reach the hospital. Unfortunately, the decision turns out to be the wrong one, as the cops soon corner him. As Chi Sung comes out, he notices that Kim is also at the same junction coincidentally. In a fit of rage, he takes out a knife and attempts to kill the billionaire. But right then, a half-dead Ju Jung gets up and shoots Kim to death. For his actions, he is shot multiple times by the cops, but at least he saved his best friend from further trouble. The screen fades to black as we hear Chi Sung saying, I'm sorry, Ju Jung. I'm sorry for everything. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.